This morning, we are in beautiful Brea, California at Amp Research. My brand new TRX is in that bay door undergoing some surgery. Eric is installing new steps. Let's go take a look. Eric, good morning. How's it going? What's happening, dude? Get, get this install going. All right. Um, we'll get started on the driver's side first. Driver's side first. And once we get the driver's side put on, we'll, well before you do that, here. what is happening behind you here? Uh, this is our new building. So we've moved from Tustin to Brea. As you can see, our R&D area is still in the works, but we'll make it work for today's install. This place is gargantuan. Yeah, so oh we've upgraded Lord. to a 100,000 square foot building. And uh, it's been quite a feat to try to get everything in here, but we were able to keep production going with, a, I think we only had one or two days down, of downtime during the move. And we were still able to meet our monthly monthly numbers from corporate, so all things are good and things are things are moving along. But your lift is not operational yet, so you're well, on your lift, back this morning. Yeah, so I'm on my back, like <laughs> like I was at my house. If I was at my house, but you know what? We'll get it done for you. Awesome. All Make right. What's right. step one? Step one is getting the linkages put on on the driver side, and then linkages on the passenger side. Put the running boards on, and then we'll do the wiring portion of it. All right, jump in. All right. This is the drive linkage for the, the driver's side. There's a specific orientation for driver's side, passenger side. So you got to note that. A lot of our power steps are that way. Some of them aren't, but there's a good portion of them that are oriented differently for clearances underneath the frame. So we are installing the Smart Series power steps, correct? Yes, that's correct. And you also offer, which we had, uh, the Excel version on yeah. the old dually, right? Those are the ones that came down considerably yeah, lower, Excels right? We have a, a faux rock rail that allows for an additional three and a half inches of drop. Gotcha. This truck, we're just going to put a standard standard linkage on with a Smart Series that has app-based capability. So you can control the override features of your steps with the app. and. There's a couple other features that you could add a bed light or you could have rock lights that are all controlled through the app. Gotcha. Uh, there's also troubleshooting. So if you're having issues in the down in the down the road, there's troubleshooting features in the app that you could to see amp draw, current draw on the motors to, to figure out what's going on with nice. the stuff. Hey, keep it down over there. We're working. <laughs> so are they. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> They're not gonna stop for us. No, they won't. <laughs> they need to get stuff done. All right, let's get this going. We've got one of the heads of engineering here on his back for us this morning. So the beauty of this truck is there's three studs that are already pre, pre-attached to the truck. So this linkage, three of these mounts are used. So these, these three are, are used on the, the front location and then this upper and these two lowers are used on the rear. But there's studs already on the body. So basically you just hang the linkage over and use these provided conical washer nuts. Now this is a single motor or dual motor? Single motor setup. Single motor. Yep. And why would one choose a single versus a dual? Uh, the dual motor is more the extreme version, which is considered our extreme version. And the extreme is for if you're in the mud and snow all the time. So the extra motor ha helps pull through. There's a bunch of dirt and debris built up on your running board gotcha. and linkages. The weight of the muck. Exactly. The weight of the muck, it helps pull through. Yeah, these are made to, to be able to install the end user can install them in their garage. And that's the beauty of the plug and play applications is it's easier to hook up the door triggers because those are, when you're going directly to each door trigger, that's where we would get a lot of people hung up on the install, calling us, say, hey, I can't find this wire, but you just plug right into the OBD2 port, super easy to do. Gotcha. Here we have the rear idler linkage. So essentially it's the same exact linkage, but without a motor, without a motor on it. Mounts the same way. Just use two of the lowers and we use that upper. Talk me through really quick because on the TRX forums, a lot of the RAM forums, it's the same question over and over and over, which is do I buy the Mopar steps 
put it into my lease payment or my, you know, my, my monthly payment, or do I opt for the AMP steps? And what is the biggest selling feature? To me, I'll tell you, A, I've had several sets of AMPs and I love them. They've been great. They've never failed me, not a single time ever. So I'm happy with the quality, the fit and finish. But the reason that I was excited about these is the Mopar steps are like watching paint dry. I get out, I'm not joking, Eric, I would get out of our yeah. Ram truck at work, our, our 3500, and I beat the step down every single time because I'm in a hurry to get out, and I end up stepping on the edge of the step, almost falling off of it. It's funny you say that because I've known people that had the same exact issue where they had one vehicle with an amp step, one vehicle with a factory step, and they, they asked me, how could I speed up the factory step? Well, truthfully, there's no way, it's just all in the gearing. But our amp step allows you to open the door and when you're basically ready to put your foot on the door, the board's already deployed. There's no waiting. And one, it could be dangerous if you put your foot on the board with the board not fully deployed. Um, obviously, because it's a danger. But um, we also offer a light. I'm not sure if the OE offers a light kit with it. But I don't believe so. But if you have any kind of warranty issues down the road, the factory, you have to replace the whole the whole side. Running board, linkages, it's all one piece. Versus us, if you have just a motor issue, we could sell you or we would warranty out the motor. Or we would warranty out the linkage or the running board, each individual component. Got um, it. Easy to replace. Easy, yeah, easy replacement. Once again, AC linkage, hang it up and over. Put the three nuts onto it and tighten them up and you're good. Buttery smooth. Like, look at this. One finger operation. So the old running board, which we still offer on our plug and play, has a different style top surface where there's a bunch of ridges. Well, what would happen over time is those ridges, your shoes would wear off just the tops of those ridges and then the powder coat would come off. Well, this. This is an extra heavy texture powder coat. So it's it's actually a grippier surface because you have more contact with your foot and there's less wear on the top surface of the running board. So over time, the powder coat's not gonna wear off as, as easily as the old style. Here's line the T-nuts. Line the T-nuts up to the pocket. Gonna set the board in position. We'll get a tape measure and check the the actual dimension per the instruction sheet but we'll at least get them started and before you tighten them down you can slide the running board forward and backwards depending on where it needs to go in you don't want it going too far forward because then you're going to crash into the factory trim pieces or you don't want to go too far back because then you'll land in the bed area This is one operation you don't want to use a power tool because you could easily strip these T-nuts out if you're not lined up with the threads. So it's better off just using a hand tool for this. And it looked like these uh, had Loctite pre- Yeah, so we, right? we put a nylon patch on it to prevent the bolts from backing out. Um, so it is a little tighter to put on, but they'll never come off on their own. Seven and a half inches from the driver's front door in front of it. So we're going to uh, measure that distance right there to seven and a half inches. And just like that. Just like that, it's adjusted. And as you can see, the body kind of arcs downward. So we want to make sure that we're not making contact with the body, that's why. And how do we tell the motor or the assembly to stop at a certain place? So the way our system works, the controller sees a certain amp draw. Once it reaches the amp draw, it kills power from the motor. That's how the step operates up or down. And there's a trigger that goes from the door that sends to the controller and, then, and it knows, okay, the door's open, steps deploy, and it goes till it sees a certain amp draw and then it kills power from the motor. So we have a physical, like a rubber stop or something that you know, well, sees the upper position? Inside the linkages, there's a bumper for both directions of travel. Ah. And that basically slows the motion down and it 
creates like a, a stopping point. The resistance. And it also prevents, the bumper prevents loud clunking noise when the linkage gotcha. is Gotcha. So we have the, the motor here. We've got to make sure that the, this motor cap, basically a dust shield for our drive system. Make sure that's in place. Set the motor up. I might need you to take your arm off for that second. You have to rotate the linkage a little bit to, to line the gears up. So I can see up in there. But then the motor kind of falls into place. Once you have the motor there, I'm going to hand start the three screws so the motor stays in place. And you tighten them up and on to the next side. Alright, so now that we have the hard parts done, which is the linkage, the running board, and the motors on, uh, we're going to go to the passenger side, do the same thing. Once that's done, we can start on the wiring portion of it. Talk me through the gearing in this and yeah, how so this works. Jay was curious as to why we had all these dimples on here. So basically what it is, there's 30, 36 degree increments. So what that does is it allows us to, to position this motor on different applications. Obviously the upper mount's different per vehicle, but this allows us to position this in different orientations to, to get more clearance uh, on bodies or frame or wire harnesses. So we could clock this however we need. As you can see, there's a dimple here and there's three tap screws. So the dimple locks this down and then you obviously tighten this spur gear case to the linkage with the three screws. So this configuration can be different on different upper mounts. Two grown men laying on the floor. <laughs> Same running board as the last side. How many iterations of this step have you gone through? Uh, the T-nut design has been in existence for a long time, but the styling of the profile, there's since I've been here, there's been I think we're on this is the sixth generation. So it's the sixth Gen generation. six. Gen six. This is the new Smart Series controller. It has a different integration or different plug. It's a sealed plug. And it's a single plug, unlike our standard plug and play power step where it has two. Uh, super easy install, goes on. Make sure it clicks. Um, one feature on this, like I talked before, is this red wire. So in the Smart Series app, there's an auxiliary light that you could tie into. So you could wire in, say, bed lights or rock lights, like undercarriage lights. Oh, wow. Yeah. Um, we will be offering a kit once this product is completely launched. It's not really launched 100%. We did a soft launch, um, but once we do a full launch, we will be offering a bed light kit. Or obviously, you could wire it in to the wheel wells or bed, whatever you prefer. And meanwhile, in the back, <laughs> we're working on uh, a bed extender. Holy mackerel. All right, you've already unboxed it. Yep. And uh, this is what comes in the bed extender HD Max box. Right, it looks like you've got a uh, driver's side, a passenger side, and then the linkages here. Yeah. Fairly straightforward. Yeah, very straightforward. What's your name? Jay, nice My to meet you. Chris. Nice to meet Hi, you. Chris. Yeah, Chris so is doing the work the, on the bed extender. Yeah, just gotta drill some holes in the truck and then get the uprights all centered up and then we should be good to go. So I'm just connecting the power in the ground. Obviously I pulled the, pulled the fuses out Connected chassis ground, positive terminal on the battery, and obviously this goes back on once we're done. So we'll, we'll wait to tie this up once everything is, is all tied in place. All right. You notice there's two different length harnesses. The short side on this vehicle goes down the driver's side leg because we're mounted, the controller's mounted on the driver's side. So this goes across the firewall and down. This one will just go down. Always make sure you're clear of all exhaust components and steering components because you don't want the wire harness to melt and you don't want it wrapping up in your steering. That would be bad. Yep. Yeah, this is long. Woo! Basically, you just fish it down a little bit and then grab it underneath here and then you route it 
the outside of the frame. Behind here, once we get underneath the vehicle, we'll kind of tie it up out of the way. But okay. That'll be good just to get. So get zip ties are our friend. Yes, they are. All right, so this came with a little template back here I see. Shows you exactly where to mount yep. all right, the brackets. Yep. Shows you where to uh, pierce the holes. Yep. Then we'll get a four millimeter or five thirty seconds drill bit, and then uh, just drill it into those exact spots. Okay. Yep. How did we know uh, distance from here down or here up? So this is kind of what the template does. It sets, a, it just rests on this little rubber stopper right here and then just fold it where the bend lines show on the template and then it sets it right in the exact spot. Gotcha. Yeah. Easy. No, he's drilling holes in the truck. No! <laughs> All right, so we have the module mounted over here on the driver's side up against the firewall. Short leg of the harness runs down to the driver's side linkage. Long side runs across the firewall. We tie it to the existing factory loom. Try to keep it up nice and tight. And this one runs down the fender well on the outside of the frame to the passenger side linkage. All right, so now you're marking these for some reason. Yep, we're marking it up so we can get these uh, put onto the side tubes and then make sure we get the right uh, overlap. Gotcha. Yep. What's the reason that they didn't carry the powder coating all the way to the end? Uh, so that allows the center tubes to slip into the side tubes a little bit easier. Gotcha. Yep. All right, so I've ran the wire down the fender well outside of the frame, and I have the wire kind of tied up here and connected to the motor. I'm going to leave the LED light wires loose. That way we can drill the holes for the lights through the pinch weld. And then once we're done connecting the lights to it, we'll tie the light wires up. Okay. All right, so I just put a piece of tape here to kind of give me a guide as to where the light needs to be mounted. We've got to drill a hole through the pinch weld, and it's seven inches rearward of the front linkage and eight inches forward of the rear linkage. Got it. All right, so what we did is we ran the, the yellow trigger wire from the outside of the vehicle through the rubber grommet and we the We used a little, little pick tool like this, yeah. just poked a hole right through the grommet. Poked a hole through the grommet so you're able to run the wire through. Um, we then zip tied it up out of the way so your feet don't catch on it. And then what we did is the plug and play module has a little two pin plug alongside the fuse panel along this edge here on the inside. There's a green bank of plugs. You want to connect to the bottom bottom left plug you just plug the little two pin connector into that and it says it in the instructions you it's guys don't have to remember this yeah and then basically what we did after that was we connected the yellow wire with our supplied posi splice connection the next step would be to plug in the dsm all right that's your connection right here i don't know if you guys can see it but uh, you plug into a factory position there where you get power and ground for the uh, the circuit and then uh, that is where we came through the grommet over there. Of course, we're gonna tie that up all nifty, make it sexy-like. So I step away for just a moment and he's done, <laughs> damn it. Yep, it's that easy. <laughs> yeah. All right, walk us through it. Cool, so once we got the uh, upper mounts uh, all bolted to the truck, we just set the bed extender right into place right here at a 45 degree angle. So you can take it in and out, it's nice and easy. Oh, let me get around the, uh, the view over here. Okay. Right in here, okay. Yeah. So 45 degree angle. It comes up and out. Yep. It pops right. right in. Drop it down and it's locked in place after that. Can't pull it in or out. And so what stops this from bouncing around as we're on the freeway? So we've got these straps right here that go into the original latch locations. Okay. You just simply put it right in there, pop her down, and she's locked in place. Okay. And then just adjust like our that. strap and then tighten her up. And then she'll be all good to go. Right there. Got it. And so can adjust this, get it all tight, and that's yep. what will keep it from moving. Correct. Yep. Nice. So when you're going down the freeway, this thing's not bouncing around. And now we've just got an extra, what, I don't know, 18 inches of uh, bed. Yeah, it looks like about almost two, two feet almost. It was two so, feet. Yeah. And then to stow it, we yep. just pick just it up and rotate it in. Yep, simply just pick it up, rotate her in. That's it. And you're able to close your bed after that. Nice and, nice and clean. Sweet!
Sweet. High five. Awesome. And what we have here, we've marked the lights. I pre-drilled with an eighth inch drill bit. And now, because it's hardened steel, I'm gonna step it up. So I went to a quarter inch, and then I'll go to the final drill size. And with the hardened steel, you always wanna go slow, because if not, your bit will just wear out. Could we use a step bit if we had one? Yeah, a step bit is actually preferred. We just don't have one in our area. Because right you're under construction. under construction and it's in storage, so. Yep. All right, as you see the wire, we ran the wire through the grommet. We wiped the body with uh, alcohol, white pad. You could use rubbing alcohol. Just make sure the surface is clean so the, the light sticks to it. We connected the book connectors, red to red, black to black. Uh, we will use a heat gun to heat shrink these so it seals the wires off. Once we get the rear light on, we'll tie up the harness and pull it up to the chassis. Yeah, so the last step is to make sure all the wires are up, pulled tight up out of the way so they don't drag on anything or snag on anything. Once that's done, ready to go. All right, here we go, the uh, inaugural all deployment, complete. right? We're all done. All right, here we go. Woo! Uh, See the lights too? Look at that. Ah. That looks nice. And we did it without a shop. Right? We did it on the ground like anyone else could do. Um, amidst construction at the new amp facility. Yep. Oh, Eric, I'm so stoked. No problem. Thank, Thank you. you.